Let's finish up with page three of the Alkenes handouts. The bottom of page three of the Alkenes handout summarizes ozonolysis. The bottom of page three has the ozonolysis reaction, and it shows the, the reagents that you can add there. Now, the important thing here is the synthetic utility. The important thing is the synthetic utility. How would you know when to use this on a synthesis? Well, the first thing is, this is a way of creating aldehydes and ketones. If you're trying to create an aldehyde or a ketone, this is a way. What was the other way we learned to make aldehydes and ketones? Grignard and uh, yeah. Now, actually, Grignards attack aldehydes and ketones. They don't make aldehydes and ketones. We can make an aldehyde or a ketone. Minus. That would also attack an aldehyde or a ketone. How we can make an aldehyde or a ketone no, by PCC, PCC by oxidizing an alcohol. So the other method we learned before for making aldehydes and ketones was PCC to oxidize alcohols. So previously we learned how to oxidize alcohols to make aldehydes and ketones, and now we have another way to make alde uh, to make aldehydes and ketones, which is ozonolysis. Um, so what functional group does PCC operate on? PCC plus what would give you an aldehyde or what do you have to add the PCC to? What type of function group? Oh, carbonyl. Remember, it's supposed to make a carbonyl. The whole point of the PCC is to make the carbonyl. The ketone? What is it supposed to, it's supposed to make the ketone? Remember the whole point of the alcohol? PCC? An alcohol. No. Yeah. PCC oxidizes an alcohol. In fact, you guys have that big handout uh, that shows all the different oxidations and reductions. You're probably going to need that on the final again that shows how you can use PCC to make aldehydes and ketones, and then you can attack them with Grignard's or lithium aluminum hydride. So that's the oxidation reduction so handout. OH plus PCC makes a carbonyl. While right now we start with just an alkene. So now we have two ways to make aldehydes and ketones. An alcohol plus PCC, that would give you an aldehyde or a ketone, or an alkene plus ozonolysis. So just to review, what type of functional group does PCC operate on? Alcohol. Alcohol. And what type of functional group does ozonolysis operate on? Alkenes. Carbon, carbon, pi bonds only, so alkenes. So that would be a, a determining factor as to which of those you would use. But there's another much more important reason to use ozonolysis. Um, we've learned basically one good way to form new carbon-carbon bonds, which was Grignard's, right? Or we've learned a couple, but Grignard's is one of the big ways. But up until right now, we haven't learned any ways to break carbon-carbon bonds. You guys have not learned any ways to break carbon-carbon sigma bonds, or, well, yeah, basically you haven't learned any way to completely detach two carbons from each other. Up till now, you haven't learned any way to completely detach two carbons from each other, but that's what ozonolysis does. Notice how ozonolysis takes a big molecule and cleaves it into fragments. Ozonolysis takes a big molecule and cleaves it into fragments. This is the only method you're going to learn this semester for cleaving a molecule into fragments. In fact, it's almost the only, only method you'll learn in the whole course. There's very few ways to completely detach one atom from another. So if you're doing a synthesis problem and it seems like part of the starting material got cleaved off and thrown away, then you're almost sure to need ozonolysis. If you're doing a synthesis and it seems like a part of the starting material got cleaved off, from another part of the starting material, that's the big clue for when you need to use uh, ozonolysis. So I have that as a synthetic utility here. It cleaves carbon-carbon bonds. And this is the only way we've learned to do that. Okay, well that'll be it for today. I think the second language book has good coverage here, so especially has good drill problems. Also, you guys probably know, every once in a while, we, went, we came across a mechanism where I said, well, this is not hugely important, but you should know it. And then we didn't really go over it. But you should try to look over those mechanisms in the second language book. Um, or, uh, yeah, so uh, I just didn't feel that was the best use of our time. But uh, so there are some things in the mechanisms you should know uh, that are in the, uh, the second language book. The most important thing is, as I think you guys have picked up on, you just, have just got hit here with a whole bunch of mechanisms. And you have to work hard to keep them clear in your mind. You just have to keep constantly drilling on them and asking, how is this different from that? How is that different from this? When would I use this? When would I use that? So you can see the subtle differences between them. And the more practice you get, the more comfortable you get with that, and the harder synthesis problems you'll be able to solve uh, when the test comes around. Okay, good. These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There is a link to my website in the info box. The address is www. 
freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm or you can just use the link in the info box. By the way, I also offer tutoring via Skype and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service at my website. Thanks.